Welcome to the Growth Mindset Company, where curiosity leads to knowledge and knowledge leads to growth. Today, we embark on yet another enlightening journey through the complex world of construction contracts. Have you ever wondered about the intricate details that form the backbone of construction projects? The rules, the agreements, the checks and balances that keep these massive undertakings on track? Well, wonder no more. In today's episode, we dive deep into the Fittick Yellow Book, a cornerstone document in the construction industry. We're unraveling its clauses, understanding its terms, and illuminating its processes. Whether you're a seasoned professional or a curious newcomer to the field of construction, this episode is crafted to enlighten, inform, and inspire. We're breaking down complex clauses into digestible insights, transforming the cryptic into the clear. So, grab a seat, stay tuned, and let's embark on this journey of discovery together. From the nuances of contractual obligations to the dynamics of project management, we've got you covered. Get ready to peel back the layers of the Fittick Yellow Book with us. Your journey into the heart of construction contracts starts right here, right now. Let's begin. Retention money explained a key financial mechanism. Purpose of retention money in construction contracts. Risk management tool. Retention money serves as a security measure against defects or failures during the defects liability period. It incentivizes contractors to maintain high-quality standards and complete work satisfactorily. Balancing power and information, in construction projects, the dynamic between the employer and contractor can be complex. Retention money addresses this by giving employers a mechanism to enforce quality standards even after the bulk of the payment is made. Retention money in cost accounting. Contingent liabilities and assets. From an accounting standpoint, retention money is a contingent liability for the contractor and a contingent asset for the employer. This reflects the uncertainty over the work's completion and performance. Financial statement implications. For contractors, retention money is a delayed receivable. For employers, it's a financial safeguard against potential future expenses for repairs or completion. This accounting treatment is crucial for accurate financial reporting. Duration for holding retention money. Contractually defined period, the period for holding retention money varies and is determined by the contract. In the Fittick Yellow Book, 1999 edition, the timeline is tied to specific milestones like the issuance of the taking over certificate and the defects notification periods. Reflecting project specifics, the duration depends on the project's nature and the risks involved. It's a strategic decision, tailored to each project, to ensure that any potential defects have time to surface and be addressed. The strategic significance of retention money in construction projects. Retention money is not just a financial detail but a strategic tool in construction contracts. It ensures a balance of power and responsibility, fostering a commitment to quality and completion standards. By understanding its role, both contractors and employers can navigate construction contracts more effectively, ensuring successful project outcomes. Detailed Process Flow of Financial Clauses Application for Interim Payment Certificates, Clause 14.3 Contractor's Responsibility The contractor is tasked with submitting detailed statements at regular intervals, usually monthly, reflecting the work executed. Statement Components These statements encompass the value of work done, adjustments due to legislative and cost changes, and the deduction for retention. Ensuring periodic compensation, this process is essential for ensuring the contractor receives timely compensation for their work, maintaining a healthy cash flow. Repayment Amortization Rate of Advance Payment, Clause 14.2b Repayment of Advance Payment, the advance payment, primarily for mobilization and design, is to be repaid at a rate of 25% of each IPC. This means a quarter of every IPC goes towards repaying the initial advance. Balanced financial planning, such a repayment structure allows the contractor to manage finances effectively, balancing the advance received against ongoing work. Percentage of Retention, Clause 14.3, C. 
Retention deduction rate, a standard 10% of each IPC is set aside as retention money, accumulating over time. Purpose of retention money, this retention acts as a security measure, ensuring the contractor addresses any defects or completes the work satisfactorily. Limit of retention money, clause 14.3, c. Cap on retention, the total retention money is limited to 3% of the accepted contract amount, not including provisional sums. End of retention deductions, once this cap is reached, subsequent IPCs are free from retention deductions, marking a significant financial milestone in the contract execution. Understanding the financial rhythms of construction contracts. The provided process flow beautifully encapsulates the financial rhythm of a construction contract under FIDIC terms. It demonstrates how payments are structured, safeguarding both the contractor's need for regular cash flow and the employer's need for quality assurance. This delicate balance is at the heart of successful contract execution. Imagine a construction project, grand in scale and ambition. The contract value is a hefty $1 million. In this world of structured payments and calculated deductions, every IPC represents a chapter in the project's financial story. Let's examine a sample table, which is as much about numbers as it is about the strategy and foresight in project management. IPC number 1. The curtain rises with an IPC amount of $100,000. Here, the dance of deductions begins. A substantial 25%, amounting to $25,000, is methodically sliced for repaying the advance payment. A financial lifeline extended to the contractor for initial mobilization. Simultaneously, 10%, or $10,000, is retained as a quality assurance measure. The contractor receives $65,000, but the story isn't just about this transaction, it's a tale of trust and accountability, where every dollar retained reinforces the commitment to excellence. As we progress to IPC numbers 2 and 3, the rhythm of deductions continues unchanged. The retention accumulates, reaching a crescendo at $30,000 the 3% cap. Here's where it gets intriguing. This cap isn't just a number, it's a strategic fulcrum balancing the contractor's motivation against the employer's risk. It's a testament to the foresight embedded in FIDIC contracts. By IPC number 4, a pivotal shift occurs. The advance payment is fully repaid. The balance hits zero. But notice the retention it remains at the $30,000 plateau, a silent guardian of quality, long after the initial financial boost is settled. This moment marks a transition from financial support to sustained assurance. Finally, IPC number 5. A reflection of fulfillment and trust earned. No more deductions for the advance payment. The net amount escalates to $90,000. This stage in the journey isn't just about payment. It's a celebration of progress, a testament to the contractor's commitment, and the enduring value of structured financial planning. As we conclude this exploration, remember, each line in this table is more than just numbers. It's a narrative of strategic financial management, risk mitigation, and the pursuit of excellence in the monumental task of construction. It's a reminder that in the world of FIDIC contracts, every clause, every percentage, every deduction, weaves the fabric of a project's success. Interweaving clauses in the FIDIC Yellow Book, 1999, the synergistic role of Clause 14.9. Our focus now shifts to the dynamic interactions of Clause 14.9 with other clauses in the FIDIC Yellow Book 1999. These interconnections highlight the complexity and the integrated nature of construction contracts. Interaction with Clause 11, Defects Liability. Direct Connection, Clause 14.9's reference to Clause 11 underscores the dependency of retention money release on the completion of work under the Defects Liability Clause. Implications for Contractors, the contractor's commitment to rectifying defects is crucial for accessing retention money, aligning financial incentives with contractual obligations. Varied Phrasing, Retention Money Release is hinged on the contractor fulfilling responsibilities under the Defects Liability Clause. Interaction with Clause 12, Tests After Completion Conditional Release Mechanism The release of retention money is also conditional upon successful completion of post-completion tests as required under Clause 12. Effect on Payment Flow Successful test completion becomes a prerequisite for the contractor to access the full retention amount. Varied Phrasing Fulfilling post-completion test requirements is a key for unlocking the full retention funds. Interaction with Clause 10, Employers Taking Over Initiating payment process, the issuance of a taking over certificate as per clause 10 triggers the release process for the first half of retention money. Significance for contractors, 
This formal acknowledgement by the employer of the work's completion kickstarts the contractor's right to a portion of the retention money. Varied phrasing, receipt of the taking over certificate marks the contractor's entitlement to the initial segment of the retention funds. General interaction with payment clauses, e.g., clauses 14.3, 14.6. Part of an integrated payment system, Clause 14.9 functions within the broader payment structure outlined in the contract, influencing the overall financial flow. Complementary financial elements, it works in tandem with interim and final payments, ensuring that the payment mechanism is comprehensive and cohesive. Varied phrasing, the disbursement of retention money is interlaced with the interim and final payment processes, creating a unified financial framework. Interaction with appendix to tender, Contractual reference point, the appendix to tender, containing specific contract data, is key to determining the release of retention money, especially for segmented projects. Dependency on contract details, the nuances of retention money release are often tied to the specifics mentioned in the appendix to tender. Varied phrasing, contractual nuances in the appendix to tender guide the release process for retention money in segmented contracts. The intricate interplay of Clause 14.9 with other clauses in the Fittick Yellow Book demonstrates the interconnectedness of contractual terms in construction projects. Each clause is a cog in the larger machinery, functioning in harmony to balance the rights and responsibilities of all parties involved. These interactions ensure that the financial aspects of the contract are not viewed in isolation, but as part of a comprehensive system that supports project success. Key points for employing Clause 14.9 Payment of Retention Money in Fiddick Yellow Book 1999. In this section, we focus on the key points for effectively employing Clause 14.9, Payment of Retention Money, in the Fiddick Yellow Book 1999. Understanding these points is vital for both contractors and employers to navigate the complexities of construction contracts. Understanding the two-stage release process phased release approach, recognize that retention money is released in two phases, the first half upon the issuance of the taking over certificate, and the remainder after the defects notification periods expire. Strategic planning, this structured release necessitates careful planning and understanding of the project's timeline, compliance with defects liability and testing requirements. Meeting obligations, ensure all responsibilities under clauses 11 and 12 are met as these are crucial for the release of retention money quality assurance this compliance underscores the importance of maintaining quality and completing all necessary tests awareness of conditions for withholding funds engineers authority be mindful that the engineer can withhold certification of costs for pending work under clauses 11 or 12 impacting fund release Preparation for delays. Anticipate potential delays in fund release due to uncompleted work and plan accordingly. Importance of the taking over certificate. Trigger for payment release. Understand the critical role of the taking over certificate in initiating the release of the first tranche of retention money. Documentation and compliance. Ensure all requirements for obtaining this certificate are met promptly. Contract specifics in the appendix to tender. Key contractual details, pay close attention to the appendix to tender for specifics about the release of retention money, especially regarding the percentage value of sections. Customized approach, recognize that each contract may have unique specifications that affect the retention money release. Timely submission of required documents. Avoiding delays, ensure all necessary documents are submitted in a timely manner to prevent delays in the release of retention money. Organizational efficiency, maintain good record keeping and communication to facilitate this process. Anticipating cash flow. Financial planning, plan cash flow management considering the staged release of retention money and its impact on overall financial health. Project budgeting, incorporate these financial timelines into the broader project budgeting and financial strategy. Dispute resolution awareness. Preparing for contingencies, be prepared to address disputes related to the condition of the works at the time of taking over. Understanding resolution mechanisms, familiarize yourself with the dispute resolution clauses and procedures in the contract. Contractual integration. Holistic view, recognize clause 14.9 as a component of the larger contractual framework, 
influencing overall project management and payment processes. Synergistic approach. Understand how this clause interacts with other clauses to ensure a harmonious execution of the contract. Risk management perspective. Balancing interests. View retention money as a tool for managing risk, balancing the contractor's need for timely payment against the employer's assurance of quality. By mastering these key points of Clause 14.9, parties involved in a FIDIC governed project can effectively manage financial aspects, ensure compliance, and maintain quality standards. This understanding is crucial for the successful execution and completion of construction projects. Picture this, a flow cart, vibrant in color, each block a step in a critical financial dance. Let's dive into this labyrinth, shall we? Our journey starts with the completion of works marked in confident pink. It's not just a milestone, it's the opening act in our retention money drama. Then comes the green block, the issuance of the taking over certificate. This is where the employer, with a stroke of a pen, acknowledges the completion of the works. It's not just a formality, it's a declaration of satisfaction. In the yellow block, we see the first half of the retention money released. It's a significant moment, symbolizing a partial financial closure. But wait, there's more. Enter the blue block, the defects liability period. It's a time of vigilance, where any lurking defects must be brought into the light and rectified. Green returns to mark the completion of the defects liability period. It's a sigh of relief moment if no defects are found, or a nod of satisfaction when all is set right. Then, the second yellow block shines the release of the remaining retention money. It's not just a transaction, it's a testament to the contractor's diligence and quality. And finally, we reach another pink milestone, full payment to contractor. It's the end of a financial journey, but the beginning of new possibilities. But what if our journey takes a detour? The blue path of defects identified leads to withholding retention money. It's a pause, a time for correction, and then, defects rectified, steering us back on course. Parallel to this, in a pink queue, are the interim payments, a financial lifeline that keeps the project's heart beating. Our final destination, the end of contractual financial obligations, in yellow. It's the closing curtain of our financial play, leaving behind lessons, experiences, and a structure built not just with bricks, but with meticulous financial planning and execution. Let's continue our exploration into the mesmerizing world of construction contracts under the FIDIC guidelines. Next, we're unfolding the sequence diagram, a step-by-step -step guide to understanding the payment process. Each step is a critical cog in the wheel of contractual execution. Our journey begins with the contractor, meticulously preparing and submitting the statement at completion to the engineer. It's more than just paperwork, it's a detailed narrative of the work done, and any additional dues claimed by the contractor. The engineer, in their role as the vigilant gatekeeper, may seek further clarity. They dive into the details, requesting additional information if there are ambiguities or areas needing verification. It's a dance of precision and accuracy. Responding to the call, the contractor provides the required extra details or clarification. It's not just a response, it's an affirmation of their commitment to transparency and thoroughness. With all pieces of the puzzle in place, the engineer then issues an interim payment certificate to the employer. This crucial document specifies the amount payable to the contractor, a pivotal moment in the financial timeline of the project. Acting on this certification, the employer processes the payment. It's a sign of progress, a financial acknowledgement of the work accomplished. In parallel, the contractor continues to tie up loose ends, completing any remaining work mandated under Clause 11 and Clause 12. It's about crossing every T and dotting every I, ensuring every aspect of the contract is fulfilled. The culmination of this meticulous process leads to the employer releasing the remaining retention money. It's a significant financial step, marking the satisfaction of all contractual obligations and the quality of work delivered. As we reach the end of today's insightful journey through the sequence diagram of FIDIC contracts, we pause to reflect. The world of construction contracts is intricate and nuanced, and we're here to unravel its complexities for you, step by step. But, dear viewers, our journey doesn't end here. It's your curiosity, your questions, and your engagement that fuel our exploration into these fascinating topics. Your support enables us to dive deeper, to bring more educational content like this to light. So, if you found today's episode enriching, and if you're as passionate as we are about uncovering the layers of construction contracts, why not join our community? Subscribe and give us a like. It's more than just a click, it's your way of saying you value this learning journey. Each subscription, every like, every comment you leave not only supports our channel but also fosters a community of learning and growth. 
So, don't hesitate. Hit that subscribe button, leave us a like, and let's continue to unravel the mysteries of fitted contracts together. Your engagement is the key to more educational adventures like this one. Thank you for being an integral part of our journey at the Growth Mindset Company. Stay curious, keep learning, and until next time, keep building your understanding, brick by brick.